This is irritating me. All right. <coughs> so, when we understand that a half-truth is a full lie, and that the enemy is focused in on infiltrating the church, we need to, the Bible says we need to be as wise as serpents, as innocent as doves, right? We need to be wise to the trickery of the devil. This is what the Bible teaches us. And Peter is really trying to get us to understand the importance of all this. He's trying to get us to understand false teachers are coming and they're coming with false doctrine. You can't believe everything you hear. You need to test the spirits, whether they're good or bad, to see if there's any false prophets there, right? Amen? Amen. You need to test it. Test it. How do we test it? We test it in light of Scripture, which is why Peter says we need to study the Word of God. We need to study it so we know a truth when we see it, and we know a lie when we see it. Amen? Amen. And this is what he gets after. And that brings us to chapter 3, verse 10. Now understand, when you hear the phrase, the day of the Lord, that literally means the day of judgment. The day of judgment. And this is what Peter's talking about. Verse 10. Let's read it. We're going to go from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, all the way to the end of the chapter. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will, will melt with the fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will, will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Amen? Amen. He goes on in verse 14. He says, Therefore, beloved... Looking forward to these things, be diligent. Be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot, without blameless, or excuse me, without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of Scripture. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware. Beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so what Peter is saying here is he's telling us first that the day of the Lord is coming. There's going to be a rapture. And then there's going to be final judgment. Amen? In fact, Jesus said, when I go, I go to my Father's house. Where my Father's house there's many mansions. He says, if it were not so, I would not have told you. And if I go there, I'm preparing a place for you. And if I go, trust me, I'm coming back. I'm going to come back and I'm going to collect you. I'm going to return and collect you up to myself. But when the rapture happens, shortly thereafter, there comes judgment. The day of the Lord, the day of God. Final judgment, the great white throne judgment. Amen? Amen. And at this point, during the final judgment, what happens is everybody is judged, both believers and non-believers. For non-believers, they're judged in their sinfulness. And the result of that judgment will be hell. 
if you decide not to get your life straight, if you don't get right with God, this side of heaven, when you go to final judgment, the Bible teaches that what awaits you is a fiery indignation. Hell. You're judged all your deeds, your works, everything that you are. Your soul is judged to hell for the non-believer. But what about for the believer? What happens? Once we get saved, the Bible says that we're sealed. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen? Amen. Once you belong to Him, you're His forever. Amen? Amen? So then what is judged in this great white throne judgment in this final day of the Lord? Our works. Our works are judged. Our works are tested by the fire. And the Bible teaches us that both heaven and earth are going to burn up. They're going to dissolve. They're going to melt away because of the fire, right? But the works that we do that are genuine, that are pure of heart, that are done for the right reasons, <laughs> in the right way, if those are done in, in, in a purity of heart, really wanting to honor God, then those works won't be burned up, but they will be rewarded, the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches us that we'll be rewarded with crowns, right? And the great thing about these crowns is that we don't hang on to these crowns. We get to lay them at the feet of Jesus, amen? amen. And so the work that we do on this side of heaven is really storing up treasures in heaven, i.e. these crowns. And so, I do good works primarily because I love God, right? I want to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to be obedient to the Word of God. And as God leads me to do something, if He's putting it on my heart to do it, I do it. I don't worry about the recognition that I get this side of heaven. I don't worry about the attaboys. I don't worry about my bank account. I don't worry about the clothes on my back or, or where I live. Wherever you want, Lord, whatever you want, I'm available. And sometimes well, sometimes what that looks like is just having a quiet conversation with my neighbor. Right? Sometimes that's praying with my neighbor. Sometimes that's giving my neighbor a hug in due season. It could look a lot of different ways. The secret to it all is just being in tune with the Holy Spirit. And that only happens through prayer and through reading of the Word. The more we pray, the more we read the Word, the more we get around like-minded believers, God begins to change us from the inside out. To where we have a sensitivity to what God would have us do. Every morning when I wake up, same thing. I wake up, I sit on the edge of the bed, I plant my two feet on the ground, first words out of my mouth, all right, Lord, what would you have me do today? Who would you have me speak to today? Take a deep breath. I get up. I go get ready for the day. I jump on the scale. Yeah, lost another two pounds today. <laughs> you have a cup of coffee. <laughs> not yet. I got another couple of. I actually, I'm not allowed to have caffeine for a solid year after surgery. What? <sighs> Listen, I used to drink two pots of coffee yeah, a day, uh, and I got myself down to a cup, cup and a half. And uh, and now that I've had surgery, I'm no allow, I'm not allowed to have caffeine for one solid year. Wow! So that's uh, that's the thorn in my flesh. Amen. <laughs> but this is the attitude that we need to have when we get up in the morning and we put our feet on the floor. Our very first concern, our very first thought should be, "All right, Lord, I'm available." I want to be used by you. What would you have me do today? 
who would you have me speak to today? How can I be of service to you, Lord? Listen, I'll be honest with you. I'm 50 years old. Compared to you guys, I, I'm, I'm young. Right? Yes. Rub it in. <laughs> All in the spirit of love, honest. I know. <laughs> I'm retired at 50, fully retired. My wife and I can do anything that we want. We have zero debt other than a small mortgage that my retirement covers with, with, with plenty left over. I say this not to brag, but to simply state this. We can literally do and go wherever we want. I can, we can wake up one morning and go on what we need. Who's ever watched Crocodile Dundee? Oh, Remember yeah. that show? Yeah. Remember he used to go on these walkabouts? Uh -huh. Do you know where the walkabout is? You remember? A walkabout is where he would just get up and, and he just, would just take off yeah, walking. Just go, yeah. Any old direction. Any old direction. <laughs> and, and, and with no destination in mind, it wasn't about the destination, but, but about the journey, right? Well, of course, my wife and I, we, we have arthritis of the knees, arthritis of the back, and the neck, the shoulder. And so we don't go on walkabouts. We, we termed a new phrase. We go on a driveabout. We jump in a truck. We jump in a truck. That's what we do, too. And we're like, all right, which way are we going to go? Are we going to go left? Are we going to go right? What are we doing? Right, let's go this way. The last driveabout we went on wasn't too long ago. We ended up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We first went up to Fort Collins to just check it out. And then we came to the freeway. And if we got on the freeway going to the right, we'd be heading south to come back to Springs. You go to the left. You head north to wherever. And so what's we on? I don't know. All right, let's go to the left. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, we're in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And you know what I learned about that trip? I never want to go back to Cheyenne, Wyoming again. That place is just a hole. <laughs> no offense to anybody out there living in Cheyenne, Wyoming, but there's nothing out there. You know, just they got a desolate. Few, few motels along the highway. You know, if you've lived, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I digress. I've been there. Love it. Oh, good. Love yeah. it. Been to the North Pole. Love it. Yeah. Uh, seen the Alaskan pipeline. All right. Uh, got to see, uh, I went to Santa's workshop and got to feed the reindeer. Oh. I actually bought my, my, uh, two of my daughters, um, uh, a one inch by one inch square piece of land in Alaska. It says you got a, you're now the proud owner. You got a toll, a toe hold in Alaska. But anyways, uh, they give you a recorded deed and everything. So a little one inch by one inch square piece of property. Uh, they sell those pieces of property. At the North Pole. Do they have to yeah. pay taxes? Uh, you know what? Yeah. If I do, yeah. listen, we're on we're on the internet, and so listen. If any IRS agents out there, I'm good. <laughs> they give you a dividend every year of every man, woman, and child. For those that established residency, yeah. that's right. That's right. After one year. So, but anyway, I got some friends that live up there, and they love it up there. Everybody I've ever talked to who's been to Alaska, they love it. But listen, we digress. A great deal. Uh, we're talking about the scriptures. Uh, the idea is he's warning us to be sold out the whole route. Amen? Amen. He wants us to be all in, right? In fact, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, it says, Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. Amen? So we can't be ashamed of who we are in Christ. we got to be willing to speak boldly about our faith. Be willing to speak and share our testimony. Right? The Bible in Ephesians tells us that we need to be imitators of God. Jesus Christ himself told us in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, he says, The Son of Man came for the sole purpose to seek and to save that which is lost. That should become our desire, our heart's desire. We should desire the things that the Lord desires, and we should mourn with the things that breaks the Lord's heart. Amen? Amen? And so when Jesus came for the sole purpose of seeking to save that which lost, we should have that same mindset. 
And so when we get up in the morning, we put our feet on the ground, Lord, what would you have me do? Well, who would you have me speak to? We can't be afraid to speak truth into people's lives. Understanding that it may not be popular. It may not be received very well. But we are not called to be sensitive to people's feelings. We're called to be sensitive to the fact that people are lost. Unless they get the truth, they will forever be lost. Damn to hell, the Bible teaches. And so we've got to be willing to, to just be real with people, to be honest with people, to say, look, I love you, and, 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 and because I love you, I need to speak truth into your life. You need to have a right relationship with Jesus. Romans 3.23 says, We all have sinned, we all fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us knows that we've blown it from time to time. But the reality, the truth that you need to hear is that Romans 6.23 says that the punishment of our, our, of our sinfulness is death. Total separation from God. But the beautiful good news is in Romans 5.8. That while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. He took upon us our sinfulness so we could be clothed in His righteousness. But the only way that works is if we put our faith and our trust in Him and in His blood shed on the cross. And more importantly, we need to make sure that we're in a love relationship with Christ, with God. And the only way we show our love to God is through our obedience. Not because we have to, but it should be because we want to. Amen? Amen. I'm probably way off track. I don't know where we at. So he's talking about being the, the day of the Lord, what's happening in the day of the Lord. He goes on, verse 14, talking about be steadfast, right? Therefore, beloved, looking forward to the things, to these things, the last day events, right? He says to be diligent, to be found in him in peace, without spot and blameless. In other words, to live a sinful life. To live a sinless life, I should say. Excuse me. For, for I'm just testing you guys to see if you're awake. <laughs> to live a sinless life, right? Two times in scriptures. Once, the paralytic man at the, the pool of Bethesda, and the second time where he rescued the adulterous woman, where they brought her to be stoned before the Lord, right? In both those cases, Jesus tells us to go and sin no more. What? Oh, that's impossible. What's impossible for you and me is completely possible in Christ, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? All things. He tells us in Scripture, be holy for God is holy. He tells us to be perfect for your Father in heaven is perfect. He tells us to go and sin no more. That sounds impossible. No way can that happen. He's telling us right here, in the day of the Lord, we need to be diligent to be found in Him without spot and blameless, without sin. The only way that happens is if we repent, confess our sins to the Lord. If we confess, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen? But when we repent, repent literally means to do a 180. Not to do what we've been doing, but to do something different. If we are focused on the same four things that the early church were focused on, and I'm going to close on this. The early church dedicated themselves, not weekly, but daily, to the apostles' doctrine, the reading of God's word, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. They did this daily. If you are walking in the Spirit and not walking in the flesh, if you're doing the things that the early church did on a daily basis, if we're praising God daily, sometimes moment by moment, 
right? If we're doing these things, do you think we're, we're sinning in those moments? Do you think? Yeah. Not at all. It is possible to live a life that's sinless. Jesus came and modeled to us how to do it. He was all about doing the Father's will. This is why he tells us in John 14, if you love me, obey my commandments. And if you obey my commandments, the Father will shower his love upon you. Amen? Amen. But we have to be obedient. And not because we have to, but because we want to. Amen? Amen. As we... That, that concludes our study in Second Peter. And as we transition into a time of communion, I want us to think about these things we talked about today. I want us to marinate on, on what Peter is really asking of us. He wants us to be sold out the whole route. He wants us to be all in. He wants us to be wise as serpent, innocent as doves. He wants us to be wise to the trickery of the devil. He wants us to be aware that the enemy is trying to infiltrate our church. And the only way to guard against that is to be in the Word of God. So you recognize a truth and you recognize the lie. He wanna, listen, we started a race the moment we got saved. And he wants us to finish the race strong. Amen? Amen. Because I promise you, the Lord's coming. Amen. Yes. He's coming. Yes. And then after that, is a day of judgment. And God will say one of two things to us. And this is this is this is Bible. He's either going to say, Get behind me, you workers of lawlessness, you sinful, rotten people, right? Or he's going to look at us and he's going to say, Well done, good and faithful servant. What do you want him to say to you? Good and faithful servant. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that, that you prepare us even now for what's to come. We pray that as we get ready to take communion, that we can marinate on the fact that there are deceivers out there. Wolves in sheep clothing. They're trying to deceive us. The Bible tells us that Satan is like a lion prowling around seeking whom he may devour. I pray that we're much wiser than that. I pray that we commit to regular reading of your word, to regular prayer, to fellowship, to breaking of bread. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some music on.